This is part 91 of ASP.NET MVC tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss creating custom remote attribute and overriding east valid method. This is continuation to part 90. Please watch part 90 before proceeding with this video. Out of the box, remote attribute only works when JavaScript is enabled. If the end user disables JavaScript, then the validation doesn't work. This is because remote attribute requires JavaScript to make an asynchronous AJAX call to the server-side validation method. As a result, the user will be able to submit the form by passing the validation in place. That's why it's always important to have server-side validation. And to make server-side validation work when JavaScript is disabled, there are two options. Option one, adding model validation errors dynamically within the controller action method. And we discussed this in part 90. But then, delegating the responsibility of validating model data to a controller action method violates separation of concerns principle within MVC. It shouldn't be the responsibility of a controller action method to validate a model data. It should be the responsibility of the model itself. And model should be using validation attributes to validate model data. And if you remember, in the previous session to validate this username property, we used a remote attribute. But this remote attribute works only when JavaScript is enabled. If we disable JavaScript, then it's not working. So in this video, we're going to create a custom remote attribute that's going to inherit from this remote attribute that's already existing within the .NET framework. And this custom remote attribute that we are going to create should provide validation both when JavaScript is enabled as well as when it's disabled. And the first step towards achieving that is to create a class file. So let's flip to the solution explorer and then first let's add a folder and let's name it common so all our common application code is going to be residing with, within this folder let's add a class file now and let's name it remote client server so we want to extend the capability um, you know by creating a custom remote attribute so remote client server is going to be the name of the class file because this remote attribute that we are going to create provides you know validation on the client side when javascript is enabled if javascript is disabled it's still going to do the validation on the server side when we submit the form so let's click add and it's a good practice to end you know an attribute class name with the word attribute so let's call this class as remote client server attribute and this class is going to inherit from remote attribute class and this remote attribute class is present in system.web.mvc namespace so let's bring that in And we need two other namespaces as well. So let's bring them in system.componentmodel.data annotations. And we need system.reflection. In a bit, we'll be writing some reflection code. So we want this class to inherit from remote attribute class because we are going to extend you know, um, that remote, the already existing remote attribute. All right, so all we are going to do here is override is valid method that's present within this base class remote attribute. So if I right click on that and go to definition, there is is valid method. I'm going to override that is valid method. So let's, once we type override and once I press space, look at that, there are two overloaded versions of is valid. I'm going to over, um, override this overloaded version. Okay. Now, I'm going to write some code here, uh, some reflection code, basically. Once I finish typing that, I'll explain that code. So first of all, I'm going to get controller. And in a bit, I'll explain why we need to get hold of the controller. Okay. And to get the controller name, I'm going to use reflection. So this assembly class is present within system.reflection namespace. So assembly.getExecutingAssembly. And within the executing assembly, get all the types. So basically all the classes, interfaces, and structures. And from those types, let's actually move this to the next line. I want one type. 
where the type name let's convert that to a lower case so the type name should be equal to I'm going to use a string dot format function here so a placeholder and then the word controller and within this placeholder I'm going to get the controller name and how can I get the controller name I can use root data so get the controller name from root data and then convert that to string so the controller name will basically be replaced within this um, in our placeholder okay and then the entire output of the string dot format convert that to lawyer because we are comparing the type name you know by converting it to a lawyer case so we need to convert this to lawyer case as well so basically let's try and understand what this piece of code is trying to do here so first of all what what we are doing we are we are creating custom remote attribute and how do we use the remote attribute so if you remember from the previous session so within the user class um, notice that this username property is decorated with the remote attribute and when we use a remote attribute uh, you know the first parameter here is the name of the method which contains the validation logic and this is the name of the controller within which that method is present and here we have the error message okay now after we are done creating this custom remote attribute people are going to use that in the same way as we are using remote attribute so they are still going to specify the method which contains the validation logic and the name of the controller and the error message okay so at this time you know when at the time of designing this remote attribute we don't know what will the name of the controller be what will the name of that method be that's why we are using a reflection code here so we are using reflection to find out the name of the controller and the name of the method which contains validation logic okay so basically what's going to happen when we compile this project okay so here the name of the project is MVC demo so when we compile this project here if you look at this home controller for example home controller is nothing but a class right so this class will be compiled into the assembly okay so the class and the methods everything that's present within this project will be compiled into this MVC demo project and when we run the project you know which assembly is getting executed nothing but this MVC demo assembly and this assembly is going to contain the validation method as well as the controller in which uh, you know that validation method is present so basically both the controller and the method are going to be residing within this executing assembly okay and that's the reason why look at this I'm using this assembly class and this has got the static method get executing assembly which will basically return this MVC demo assembly and on that assembly I am invoking this get types method so get types what is this method going to do it's going to return all the types within the assembly and when we say types what do we mean we mean classes structures interfaces all the types basically but we don't we are not interested in all the types we are only interested in a controller whose name matches with the controller that is present in the root for example when I am on the create um, you know when I when we are at this URL so we are present within the home I mean we are invoking the home controller and the create action method so I want the home controller because that controller is going to contain the method which contains the validation logic let's say okay so this is just an example so basically we're going to get the name of the controller from the root data and similarly we are going to get the action name also from root data alright so we're getting that name and then look at that from root data we only get the word home we don't get home controller and that is the reason why we are appending that word there controller okay and then we are converting both of them to lower case and then comparing so if there is a controller you know within the types then give me that controller that's what we are doing here we are getting the type of that controller okay alright so once we have the controller if that controller 
is not equal to null. What is the next step? We need to get the action method, which contains the validation logic. Okay, so to get the and that action method is obviously going to reside in a controller. So I'm going to use that controller which we have just retrieved, and and look at this controller is of type type, and this type class has got this method get methods function. So which is basically going to return all the methods which are going to be present within that controller. Okay, and if you look at this get methods, what is it returning back? It's returning an array of method info objects, but we are not interested in all the methods. We are only interested in the method which contains the validation logic. So get methods dot first or default, and we need to specify the name of the method. So let's call this maybe method such that method dot name again let's convert that to lawyer for compassion equal to how am I going to get the name of the action method again let's use raw data so let's copy that and let's paste it right here and here let's specify action okay so return me that action method okay and since we are using first our default we are only going to get one method info object back so let's store it in a reference variable of type uh, method info and maybe let's call that action okay and if action is not equal to now okay so for what did we do we got the controller which contains the method and the method itself. Next step is to create an instance of this controller and then invoke the method. Okay, so to create an instance of this controller, so first of all, let's create a variable of type object. So here instance is of type object because we don't know whether if it's going to be home controller or if it is, you know, student controller, employee controller, we don't know the type. That's why we are using reflection to retrieve the controller. And that's why we can't hard code here, whether if it is going to be an object of type home controller or student controller, employee controller, you know, that's the reason we are using, um, you know, the instance type as object. Okay. And to create an instance of the class that we are going to get, I'm going to use this class activator and this class has got a method create instance and to this method we just need to pass the type so what is this method going to do it's going to create an instance of that um, class and then it's going to store in this reference variable okay so we have an instance now the next step is to invoke this action method okay now obviously I cannot say instance dot action okay so how are we going to invoke this action method? Again, so action dot invoke. So I'm using invoke function on that method info object. And look at this. Obviously, when we have a customer object, and then let's say, for example, that customer object has got a save customer um, method. So, and if it's an instance method, you have to create an instance of that customer class. So, customer C1 equals new customer and C1 dot save customer details. You know, you invoke the method on the instance of that class. So, similarly, if you want to invoke a controller action method, you need an instance of that controller. And that instance is right here. And then I'm invoking this function. So, we need to pass, look at this to this invoke method, we need to pass the instance of the controller as well. And then a method will have parameters. So if you look at this validation method is username available that we have, it has got a parameter. Okay, so we need to pass that parameter value when we invoke, you know, the action method. So that's the next parameter. And how are we going to get that value? Look at this, this is valid method is receiving that value. So I am simply going to pass that here. And if you look at, um, you know, 
the type here it's expecting that to be of type object array so I'm going to create an object array and then pass the value that's coming into this function okay so obviously when we invoke that function look at this when we uh, invoke this function what is going to happen it's going to return some result back right so similarly when we invoke the function we are going to get some result so I'm going to store that in a variable of type object again and let's call it maybe response okay so if once we get the response so that is this function is going to return something back but then for the remote attribute to perform validation on the client side it should return a JSON result so basically I'm going to check if response is of type JSON result so if response is JSON result then what am I going to do I'm going to typecast this response to JSON result and then I'm going to get the data out of that so whatever data that method returns and re look at the return type of data again it returns an object type so let's store it in a variable of type object and maybe let's call this um, JSON data okay now this method which contains the validation logic what type of data should it return it should return a boolean data because if we want the validation to succeed this method is going to return true if the validation if we want the validation to fail this method is going to return false so basically it has to be JSON data because we want the validation to be done on the client side as well okay so another check that I'm going to make if this JSON data is boolean so if it is boolean then what we need to do typecast that to of type boolean so I'm going to typecast this JSON data to boolean type so when I typecast it to boolean type if it turns out to be true so if this JSON data is true then what we want to do look at this what is this is valid method returning it's returning validation result back okay so basically we want to return validation result now so if it is true then I'm going to say valid return validation result dot success because if the validation method that we have invoked if that returns true then what does it mean the validation logic um, has successfully um, you know passed the validation so in that case we want to return you know a success message and at that point you know the validation passes and the form will be submitted on the other hand if it has not returned true if this data is not true then what we want to do again the return type is validation result so here I'm going to create an instance of this validation result object and then you can specify the error message so I don't want to hard code any error message here but then when we use this custom remote attribute we're going to specify look at the way we are using it we're going to specify the error message as well so whatever the error message the user is going to specify let's use that and to get access to that error message I'm going to use this dot error message okay so that's it we have overridden is valid method but there are lots of conditions here look at this we are saying if controller is not equal to null then go ahead and get the action method if that action method is not equal to null then create an instance of the controller execute the action and then once we have the response if that response is JSON result then do this so if these conditions are not met if any of these conditions are not met then obviously it will break out of that if condition in that case what do we want to do 
you can specify whatever you want your method to do. For example, let's say here I have specified within the user class, for example, um, the controller name as home678. And do we have home678 controller here? We don't have it. So if we don't find the controller, then do you want the validation to succeed or do you want the validation to fail? That's what we're going to write here. Okay, and similarly, if the action method that we have specified is not found, if I say something like that, then what should happen? You know, that action method is not there within the home controller. Okay, so should the validation fail or should the validation succeed? Okay, so basically for now, let's say we want the validation to succeed if, you know, the controller is not found or the action method is not found or if the return you know, data is not JSON data, okay, or if the, if, or it is JSON data, but it's not a Boolean data, okay. In all those cases, you know, if, if any of these if conditions are not met, you know, by default, the validation is going to succeed. If you don't want the validation to succeed, then probably you can return a new validation result like this. In that case, the validation will fail. We'll look at that um, actually um, in action. When we, when we are done writing this attribute. All right, so that is overriding the is valid method. The other thing that we need to do is look at this. At the moment, if I try to use remote, let's actually build this. So build succeeded. Now I can use our remote attribute, the custom remote attribute that we have created. And notice that this attribute is present in mvcdemo.common namespace. So if we have to use it here, we have to bring that namespace in, so mvcdemo.common namespace, and then we should have remote client server, okay? And look at this, I only have two constructors. One constructor doesn't take, look at this, two overloaded versions of this constructor. One constructor doesn't take any parameters. The other one takes these named parameters, okay? But then I want to be able to specify the name of the controller, the name of the validation method, and the error message, but I don't have a constructor that can do that. That's basically because we haven't implemented them within our remote client server attribute. So let's go ahead and implement them. Let's minimize this function. Okay, so public remote client server attribute. And what I'm going to do here is invoke the base class constructor that I'm interested in. And if you look at the base class, what is the base class for this remote client server attribute? Remote attribute. And if you look at this base class, Look at that, there are several um, overloaded constructors for the remote attribute. So I'm going to basically first invoke this overloaded constructor. And to invoke that, we need to pass root name. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to specify root name. And then I'm going to pass this to the base class constructor. OK, and similarly, let's make a copy of that. And I am going to invoke, I want this version of the constructor as well, where the end user can simply specify just the action name and the controller name. Okay, so string, let's call this action, and string, let's call this controller. And then obviously we need to pass them to the base class uh, constructor. So action and controller. And I want to have another constructor as well. So we have implemented this constructor. And I want to implement this as well, where it takes the action name, the controller name, and the area name. OK, so here I'm going to pass string area name. By the way, for these parameters, you can give any meaningful name you want. Okay, I just chose the same names because it'll be more uh, readable. The code will be more readable. All right, so we are done implementing the constructors as well. Now, if we go back to the user class and look at this, the moment I open up the parentheses, look at this, now I have six versions of the constructor, but I am going to use this overloaded constructor where we can specify the action method that contains the validation logic, the controller that contains that method, 
and error message. Okay, so I'm going to copy this and pass it to pass it as the arguments for this remote attribute. Let's get rid of that. So now we're using our custom remote attribute. And at the moment, JavaScript is disabled on my browser. Uh, but let's go back to our home controller. And if you remember in the previous session, we have delegated the responsibility of validating model data to the controller action method by including this logic here. So I'm going to comment that because we don't want our controller action method to be responsible for validating model data. So I'm going to build this now. And let's reload this view. So at the moment, JavaScript is disabled. Look at this. So JavaScript is blocked on this page. So the page has reloaded. And uh, within the database, we already have test username. Look at that. We don't get client-side validation. That's basically because JavaScript is disabled. But when I click Create, we should get the validation error message. Oh, for some reason, it is still posting back to the server and the user is created. Let's see why. I mean, let's actually put a breakpoint and then um, we will debug that. So when we post the form, it should actually invoke this function uh, within our home controller. We should have is username available. Look at that. That is returning JSON result. And we should have the data. OK. Again, on the edit view, we have that scripts section. So let's get rid of that. So within our views, edit. So to get the compilation, to get rid of the compilation error, let's get rid of that. And once we refresh, this view should load. But um, we don't have anything to do with the edit view anyway. So let's go to create new. Let's actually run this with debugging support. And then within our user, I mean home controller, the create action method that responds to the HTTP post operation will have a breakpoint within that. So this is the method that we want to be invoked. Our remote client server attribute should be invoked. So basically, this is valid method. So if this method returns true, then we want the validation to succeed. Otherwise, we want a validation error message. OK, so that's what this line says. So it should work, but let's put a breakpoint and see why it's not working. All right, so let's create. Let's use test as the username. OK, so it's coming here. Let's press F10. So we should get the controller. So the controller should be our home controller, as you can see there. So controller is not null, and we should get our action method. The, for some reason, action method is null. So let's see why. So that's the reason why it didn't find the action method. So basically, so this dot root data dot action, that should give us the action method. So let's check immediate window. So action is username available. We get that. And get methods should also return that. Let's look at our comparison. Oh, look at that. We are not converting this to lower case. And that's why it's not matching. So let's disable this. Let's detach all. Let's convert that to a lower case. OK, let's build the solution once again. Let's reload this view. Let's create new user. Let's try with test. Click. Look at that. 
we get the error message as expected. Username already in use. So this is the server-side validation. Now let's enable JavaScript and see if the client-side validation works as expected. But before we do that, one thing that I want to do is look at this. When we use this remote attribute within our user class, we are specifying this as the function name. Let's say, for example, I am using, you know, one at the end is username available one but within the home controller do we have is username available one we don't have it so obviously the method will not be found so in that case what's going to happen the validation is going to succeed because it returns validation success let's actually look at that so let's build the solution let's refresh this and let's enter test click create look at that the user is created that's because if we don't find the action method the default behavior you know is to make the validation succeed but if if you don't want the validation to succeed all you need to do is return the error message instead of success as the validation error I mean instead of success so let's build this and let's create new now we should get the validation error because it didn't find the action method and the default behavior is going to be validation is going to succeed okay all right now let's enable client side validation but before we do that let's correct that name so within our user class we want that to be is username available let's build the solution let's reload this view and let's enable client side validation. So let's go to settings, search for JavaScript, click on content settings, allow all sites to run JavaScript. Okay, let's reload this view. And as I type test, look at that, we get the validation error right away, username already in use. So the custom remote attribute that we have just created is able to perform both client-side validation as well as server-side validation. So the validation is done on the client side when JavaScript is enabled. If we disable the JavaScript, it is still able to do the validation on the server side. In fact, you know, if somebody asks you in an interview, um, can you give me a practical example of where have you used the reflection in your project, you can give this as an example. To uh, implement custom remote attribute, we had to you know, get the controller name and the action method um, using reflection. So obviously a very good example for the practical application of reflection. All right. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.